we belong to the Lord. Amen. Bought the price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's, and uh, we are to glorify Him. Good to be here tonight. I trust you've had a good day, and uh, praying the Lord will help us again tonight in the service, do something for all of us, and uh, if you're saved, then He'll help you, and if you're not, then He'll save you. Amen. He wants to. Amen. I'm going to say a word to for preach tonight. <clears throat> I had a brother-in-law, married my youngest sister. I have two sisters older than I, and a sister and a brother younger than I, in the middle of five. And my youngest sister married a devout Pentecostal man. His mother told him that uh, all his life that uh, all Baptist people go to hell, that there's no such thing as a saved Baptist. That's what he believed. They were tongue talkers and uh, snake handlers, literally snake handlers and all that. And uh, when he got in the family, I began to pray for him and beg him to come to church. And he didn't have anything for church, didn't want to go to church. He had his mind on money. He's a wealthy man. He had his mind on money. Long story made short, his mind had been so corrupted and infiltrated by false doctrine that he had a hard time seeing the truth. And uh, he got to come into church finally. I'd fast for him and pray over him for weeks at a time. And he'd come to church. And finally, got him to come one Sunday. The first Sunday he came, he got under conviction. And he came down to the altar. And he asked the Lord to save him, but he didn't get saved. He didn't know how to get saved. I'd talk to him, and he'd say, well, I've got to set my house in order. I've got to get things in order where I can get saved. I'd try to explain that wasn't the way it works. He couldn't get it. He got up went back to his seat after a while. Second Sunday... He came back again, same thing. Third Sunday, he came back again. He was sitting way back in the right and came down the aisle running, actually running, had his hands, his face buried in his hands, crying and screaming uh, that he wanted to be saved. And that third Sunday, I just told the church to stand, dismiss in prayer, y'all go to the house. Now, so I'm going to take Gary down to the basement and I'm going to talk to him, to spend the evening talking with him. And the Word of God has a power over your life. It's a lamp. It's a light. It's a, uh, it's a light to her feet, and a lamp to her path, or a, light, a lamp to her feet, and a light to her path, and so on. I took him down to the basement. That was about 12, maybe a little after. And uh, at about 3 o'clock this evening, we had been talking, and uh, I'd prayed with him, reading the Bible, tried to understand, explain it to him, and answer questions for him, and he couldn't get it. So finally, about 3 o'clock, I was reading it to him, and it was like a light came on. He said, I see it. I understand. I see it. And he just asked the Lord to save him, reached out by faith and took the Lord, and God saved him. That's been 36 years ago. And he's been saved ever since, serving the Lord, and uh, Sunday school teacher. And uh, so I said that to say this. If your mind has been, uh, I, I use the word warped, that's maybe my old, old hillbilly term, but if your mind's been warped by false doctrine, you need this junk at. You need this junk at. Yeah. All that you've heard and all that you've been told. Yeah. And believe the Bible. Yeah. Just believe what the Bible said. Yeah. Word of God's truth. It's the word, truth of God. Ephesians 1 said that after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Yeah. Right. He didn't say the gospel of salvation. Right. He said the gospel of your salvation. Yeah. Right. Now I heard the gospel many times, but I never heard the gospel of my salvation. Yeah. Until one night he spoke to me about it. Yeah. And that night it's the gospel of my salvation. Yeah. It's the gospel of God wanting to deliver me. And uh -huh. God wanting to save me. Yeah. And so after I heard that, I responded in faith and uh -huh. came to the Lord and he saved me. Yeah. And he'll do the same for you. Yeah. Romans chapter 6 verse number 17 said that you were the servants of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which is delivered unto you. And therefore becoming the servant of Christ. So uh, you need to obey the gospel. Yeah. You say, what is obeying the gospel? What's obeying the gospel? Well, it ain't doing good. That ain't the gospel. Gospel ain't not doing this and doing that. It's not a negative thing and a positive thing. It's not don't do and do. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good news of what God's done for man through the death of his son at the cross. That's the gospel. Now, I said all that to say this. I preach hard most of the time. I, I, and sometimes I feel like it's necessary just to take your time and just give you the Bible. 
and just give you what the Bible said. There's no hope in me. I can't help you. His words on help you. His words on help you. I mentioned last night, wherefore laying aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, let us receive with meekness the engrafted word, where it is able to save your soul. The word's always able to save your soul. First Peter 1 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. John 6 63, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, Jesus said, they are spirit and they are life. Aren't you glad of that? I'm glad the Word of God's quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the dividing of the Son, soul, and spirit, and joint, and the marriage of the sermon of thoughts and intents of the heart. God saves through the use of His Word. Please God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The world by wisdom knew not God. Please God by the foolishness of preaching to save people. And so God wants to save you tonight. God wants to save you. Noah is a preacher of righteousness. He preached to his generation. And every generation God's ever saved, he's saved through the preaching of the Word of God. So I want you to stand a minute tonight. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Timothy chapter number 1. 1 Timothy chapter number 1 and 1 Timothy chapter number 2. And I, I, I want to, I, I wanna, if God will help me tonight, I want to contain myself just to the Scriptures and uh, trust that the Scriptures will help you. I, I'm trying to decide whether I want to take the time just to read them to you and let you turn with me or whether I just want to quote some of them and give them to you. But however the Lord does that, it'll be fine with me. But First Timothy chapter number 1, First Timothy chapter number 1. Now look at me just a minute. I'm, I'm here tonight. I want you to listen at me a minute. I'm here tonight not to entertain you. I'm not here to impress you. and I, I don't want to. I'm, I'm not concerned about the manner of preaching. Somehow we get in our mind unless we're preaching like a wild man fighting a fire, you know, and like a, 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 a man trying to get the bees out of his britches. You ever got bees in your britches? I'll tell you one thing, you don't sit right real still. And, uh, and sometimes we think a man ain't preaching that way, he ain't preaching. But I'm telling you what gets you right with God is the proclamation of the Word of God hearing the word. And so I, I feel a deep burden tonight to try to take this Bible and somehow get this Bible into you that you can get some help and get right with God. First Timothy 1 and verse number 15. Paul said to Timothy, writing to Timothy, he said, This is a faithful sin and worthy of all acceptation. Look at it now. Look at, your, look at your Bible. Everybody, read it in your mind while I'm reading. Don't just stand there. Read it in your mind while I'm reading. That Christ Jesus came into the world to do what? Save to save sinners yeah. of whom I'm chief. Now come back to that a minute. Look at chapter 2 and verse number 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who will have all men. And that, that's a gender word, speaking of men and women in the Bible, who will have all humanity, it is, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all. Look at that. Who gave himself a ransom for all. For all. Verse 4, who will have all men to be saved. Verse 6, who gave himself a ransom for who? All. all. To be testified in due time. Let's bow to pray. Father, thank you tonight for the privilege to be here. Lord, I pray for your help now. God, not for me, not Lord just for me, but God, that Lord, we could be able through your word tonight, God, to help someone. Lord, that's fainting in a life of sin, needing God to be saved, needing, Lord, assurance, needing help, needing to know, God, the truth of God. And I pray, Lord, tonight you'd take your Bible and do that. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding. May, Lord, it not be the manner in which I preach that's influencing the heart, but may be the word that I preach, God, that's influencing the heart. Help us, I pray. May the light of God shine down deeply in all of our hearts. And Lord, deliver us, I pray, and bring us into your fellowship. And we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Now, I, I, I'm not going to preach hard. The Lord will help me. 
I mean that. I'm not, I'm not, that's not that I don't want to. I just feel the need tonight to slowly take the Bible and just uh, give to you and try to help you. Look back at verse 16 a minute, what he said there. I mean, verse, verse 15, excuse me. He said that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Now, he didn't say that he came to try to save anybody. He didn't come to try to save anybody. He came to save. Meaning this, that everybody that he saves, he saves. He doesn't half save them. He doesn't partially save them. He doesn't leave you with some responsibility of saving yourself. He came into the world. Thank God to save sinners. Amen. I could get, I, I get blessed this thing about that. Thank God. He came into the world to save sinners. That's why he came. He didn't come to heal the sick, though he healed the sick. He didn't come to raise the dead, though he raised the dead. He didn't come to feed the thousands, though he fed the thousands. He didn't come to walk on the water, though he walked on the water. He didn't come to steal the storms, though he steal the storms. He came. The reason, thank God, that Jesus Christ left heaven was to save sinners. That's why he came. That's the purpose of his coming. That's the thrust of of the heart of God was to send his son to save sinners. Now, may I say it again? He didn't come to try to save anybody. God don't try to save anybody. Now, let, let me give you a picture of that. He didn't come, uh, a man's out in the ocean or maybe out in the river and uh, there he stands in the river and he's drowning in the river. And here's a man on the bank and he throws out a lifeline to help save him. No, no, no. That's not what the Lord did. He didn't stand on the bank and throw you out a lifeline to help save you. Amen. He, thank God, left the bank and came down into the river where you are and laid hold of you and pulled you out, thank God, and saved you. He didn't come to help save you. He come with the purpose to save. Everybody lays his hands on. Everybody gets in him. Everybody gets in his family. Everybody he touches, he saves. Amen. Either you're saved or you're not saved. You're either in or you're out. You're old or you're off. You're going to heaven or you're going to hell. You're saved or you're lost. He didn't come to help save. He's not a savior to help save anybody. Amen. Amen. Help me, dear Lord. Luke 2, chapter number 11 said, when those angels came out that night to those shepherds, said, Behold, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. He is, thank God, the Savior. He came to save. Now listen to me a minute. The word saved is more than a religious cliche. It has a real meaning. You are actually getting saved from something. It's not a cliche. It's a real Bible term. Now listen to me a minute. The word saved in itself means this. It means to be delivered from a position of danger and placed in a position of safety. To be taken from danger and placed in safety. Amen. You know what God did for me one day? He saved me. He took me from a place of danger and brought me over and put me in a position of safety. Thank God. That's why I'm saved. Not what I did, not what I'm doing, but thank God He came to me and He saved me and brought me out of danger and put me into safety. I've got too far to go to get really bogged down right there, but many years ago, my dad was a coon hunter. And you all know what coon hunting is. And my dad was a coon hunter. And uh, there was a guy that helped with, that hunted with us. He was six nine. He was no man. I mean, he was no fat man. He was no uh, 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 fleshly man. He was just an all man, you know. And uh, we was hunting and going across a river. I was about 12 year old. And, and the water was right up to here. And I was trying to wade that with a stick below me, trying to keep from drowning. My dad went on toward the dogs. And, and uh, Wayne, the big guy, was behind me uh, about 20 yards, I guess. And, and that water washed me down. And I couldn't swim. And I was going down the river. And I went down two or three times. And I remember in my mind like it was yesterday. I had gone under. And I knew in my mind the last thought I had was I'm dead. And I didn't tell mommy bye. And about the time I went under. And I knew I was dead. Big old Wayne with legs as long as my body about it. Made about four big strides, reached down under that water and got me by the back of the coat and pulled me up and said, where are you going, son? 
You see, what did Wayne do that night? He saved me. He reached down to where I was and thank God picked me up and saved me. You know what God wants to do to you tonight? He wants to reach down right where you are in your mess and reach down and get a hold of you and pull you up and bring you out of position of danger and place you over here on place of safety. That's what He wants to do. Now, let me say three things, and I've got a long way to go, so I'm going to take my time. What does salvation deal with? What is being saved? What does salvation deal with? Well, let me say number one, salvation deals with sin. That's the first element of salvation. We were born sinners. We didn't become sinners by what we do or don't do. Get a hold of that. You're not a sinner tonight by what you do or don't do. You're a sinner by birth. Come here now. Don't y'all sit there and let this thing, the devil, get a hold of it. Listen, you're a sinner by your birth. You was born in Adam, and Adam was condemned by sin, and you were born with sin in your veins. The reason you sin is because you've got sin in your veins. You've got the nature of Adam, your great, great, great on back grandfather Adam. You've got the nature of Adam in your land, in your loins, and in your veins. You're a sinner because you sin, but you sin because you're a sinner. Amen. That's the first element. God will never save anybody to the recognize they're a sinner. Oh, I've got a long way to go tonight. Do you hear what I just said? God will never save you to recognize you are a sinner. More people are going to hell not being a sinner than anything else. You've got to recognize you're a sinner. I'm not a good man. I'm not a good woman. I'm not a good girl. I'm not a good boy. I'm a sinner. I'm not going to rush this just because uh, maybe we want to get out of here a little bit tonight. But listen to me a minute. Some years ago, a preacher friend of mine whom I preached for a lot in North Carolina, his daughter, his daughter, uh, every time she'd come to where I'd preach, she'd get tore up and get doubt and she's saved. And she'd come to Alder and she'd doubt it. And she got to where she didn't even want to be around me. She hated me. And, uh, and one night they came to church where I was preaching and they come to the altar and they bowed right here and uh, they prayed a minute and then the preacher looked up at me and, the, and he wasn't pastor of the church. He looked up at me and he's come here. And I got down there by and I began to talk to her and I said, uh, 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 have you ever seen yourself lost? Did you ever see yourself lost in a sinner? She looked up at me like she could slap me and she said, uh, I ain't never been a sinner. I've always been a good girl. Are you listening to me tonight? I know I'm preaching slower than I've been doing. She said, I ain't never been a sinner. I've always been a good girl. And I called her by name and I said, no, no, no. You're not a good girl. There ain't none good, no, not one. Amen. And I said, you're not good. You're a sinner. And she said, I ain't no sinner. I said, you will have to go back to your seat and make up in your mind when you become a sinner, God will save you. She got back up and went to her seat. And went out the door. The things went right when her, her and her daddy went out the door. I know they're a little offended at me. And uh, but the next morning, about ten o'clock, their daddy, her daddy, called me, and he said, uh, he said, brother, you know what happened last night? I said, I have no idea. I said I got up about four o'clock and I heard, and he called his girl by name. He said I heard her crying in her bedroom, and he said I wanted to go in there and talk to her a little bit, but the Lord just told me to do exactly what you said to leave her alone. And uh, he said, uh, about six o'clock, I heard her again. I made a pot of coffee and just sat down in here and began to pray. He said, about 8, 30 something to nine, he said, she come out crying. Said, she said, daddy, I just got saved. He said, I said, what was the matter with you? He said, it's exactly what Brother Buster told me. I hadn't become no sinner. Amen. God don't save good people. God saves sinners. Amen. If you'll plead guilty, to, have you ever, hey, have you ever pleaded guilty before a holy God to be in a sinner? and breaking the law of God and deserving the wrath of God and deserving hell because you broke the law of God. It deals with sin. Secondly, salvation deals with the Savior. It deals with the Savior. He loves us. Aren't you glad of that tonight? I've got a long way to go. You're going to have to listen at me. He loves us. Do you ever see it tonight? Listen to this statement. Look at me, everybody. Listen at me. God loves you. Listen a minute. God loves you. He loves you more than you could ever know in your whole world. 
there's this statement that's helped you if you listen at it. God wants to save you worse than you want to get saved. Now there's a danger in our society that's disturbing me on two sides. Number one, on the left side, there's the crowd that makes it too easy. There's a crowd that does a little Romans road deal, say these words, say this prayer, and you're going to be saved. That's too easy. That's too broad. Amen. But there's a crowd on the other side that makes it look like God's some kind of big tyrant and communist that won't save nobody. Both of them's wrong. Both of them's wrong. God wants to save you. Don't, don't you tell me, ain't nobody going to tell me in this whole world that God don't love sinners and that God don't want to save sinners. God wants to save you worse than you want to be saved. You say, I want to be saved with all my heart. Well, let me tell you, God wants to be, you to be saved with all of his heart. All right, listen. You say, how do you know God wants me to be saved? Because he sent his own son down from the glory world, put him into a virgin womb, burst him into this world, let him live a a virtuous, pure life, died a sinner's death at Calvary, died the equivalent of a sinner's death, suffered the wrath of God, bore your wrath, bore your shame, bore your suffering, thank God at Calvary, to prove to you that he loves you. He, He wants you to be saved so much that he come for you. God, help us to get a hold of that. God wants you to be saved. I don't know, I may have a preach tonight, tomorrow night, both on this. I don't know where I'm going. I read some years ago about a man out in Kentucky in the late 1800s. It was just an old reprobate. Mean to the devil and killed some people. It's mean to the devil, a drunk, and a wife beater, and a profane cusser. And uh, he didn't say, I, God won't save me, God won't save me, God won't save me, God won't save me. One night under a tent revival in the late 1800s, they said the preacher preached on how that Christ died for the ungodly. In Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8, how he died for the ungodly. And when we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us uh, when we were yet sinners. Uh, and he said that preacher got up that night and preached on Christ dying for the ungodly. Said that preacher preached out and said that man stood up and said, he said, what did you say? Said he said, I said that Christ died for the ungodly. He said, that's what I am right there. I'm ungodly. Did you tell me Christ died for me? He said, that's what the Bible said. He died for the ungodly. And it registered that night. And he came down to the altar, thank God and got saved. I'm telling you, Christ died for good people. Christ died for ungodly people. Christ died for reprobates. Christ died for wicked men and women. Christ died for dirty, vile, vicious, uh, wicked, mean, devilish sinners. Uh, But he died for people that's been raised in church all their life too. And never drunk liquor, never lived in sin. Thank God. He died for you. He wants you to be saved. God's desire for your life is that you get saved. That's what he said in 1 Timothy 2. Who will have all men. I believe that means just what it says. Who will have all men to be saved. 2 Timothy 2, Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering to us. We're not willing, listen to me, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Every time I preach a gospel, I get blessed thinking about it. Not willing that any should perish. Ezekiel 18, 20 said, It's not God's will that the wicked die. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. God don't enjoy sending anybody to hell. God don't enjoy sending you to hell no more than you enjoy sending your son and daughter there. God loves you. It deals with the Savior. Then it deals with the salvation. Let's listen to me close now. Let me have your ear. I want your ear. I want your ear. Luke 19, 10. He said, even as the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He didn't come to hunch and try to save you. He come to seek it and to save you. 
thank God, friend. That's his will. That's the desire. That's salvation to seek, even as the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. If you become lost, he'll seek you and he'll save you when you admit you're lost. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.15, this is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. First Timothy 2 Timothy 2.5, who would have six, who would have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 14 said, for us Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God verse 17 said for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him thank God might be saved Amen. He came into the world of seeking to save dying poor sinners that couldn't help themselves you can't help yourself. You're dead in trespasses and sin. But he came to save you. Amen. Matthew 1 21 said, And she shall, talking about Mary, she shall bring forth a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. I'm glad his name's Jesus tonight. Yahshua, that's not talking in tongues. Yahshua meaning Savior. I'm glad, thank God, his name is Savior. Amen, aren't you glad of that? First Timothy 6, or First Timothy 5 said he would have, he said that he's a Savior of all men, especially, First Timothy 4, 10 it is, especially of them that believe. He's the Savior of all men. He said in the book of Isaiah chapter 45, and there is no other God. I don't know of another Savior. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is only one name. Thank God. His name is Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. He's the only Savior. Yes, yes. Amen. A little old poem I put to memory based on Acts. Uh, 411, none of the name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Little old poem I put to memory years ago. None other name than thine, Jehovah Jesus, Savior divine, on which to rest for sins forgiven, for peace with God and hope of heaven. Amen. I'm glad it's in the Lord Jesus. Amen. There is no other way. It ain't in the Pope, the priest, the cardinals. It ain't the rabbi, the Baptist preacher. It ain't in the Episcopalian rector. It ain't the board or the deacon board. It ain't nobody. If you're going to get it, you've got to go to one man. Yeah. Amen. There's one God and one mediator between man and man, Christ Jesus, yeah. who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Thank yeah. God. He's the only Savior. Yeah. There is no other. Yeah. Miss him and you'll miss heaven. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Miss him and you'll miss heaven. Yeah. He's the only, listen, there's none other mediator between man, one man between man, one mediator between men, God and man, Christ Jesus. The mediator ain't a saint, Anne. It ain't the Virgin Mary. It ain't the Pope, the priest, the Episcopalian rector. I'm telling you, the mediator between God and man is the man, Christ Jesus. You gotta go to God to get to him. You gotta go through him to get to God. You can't get to God apart from him. He's the only one bringing this. And you know what he is? He's the God man. He's 100% God and he's 100% man. And thank God, God's on this side and man's on this side. And they couldn't get to each other. But they man, the God man come down. And he reached over here and got a hold of the hand of God. And he reached over here and got a hold of the hand of man. And he pulled them together, thank God. And now, thank God, man can come to God because I've got a mediator. I've got somebody that'll bring me to God. Amen. First, first Timothy, First Peter three eighteen. He said that uh, he once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, being put to death in the flesh, quickened by the Spirit, that he might bring us to God. Thank God, you can't get to God, but he can bring you to God. He can bring you to God. He can bring you to God. Bring you to God. Right. Yes, right. Hallelujah. He can bring you to God. I can't get to God. 
But thank God I got one that reached down one day and God in me and me in him. And now he took me to the Father. And when life's over, I'm going to be with the Father because I'm in the Son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't that pretty good? I'm a liking it myself. John 5, 24 said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on him, he that believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, shall not come to condemnation, past death and the life. John 3, 36, He that believeth on the Son, hath life. He that believeth not the Son, shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. You've got to believe on the Son. You've got to believe in Jesus. You've got to get to the Son. Your praying won't save you. Praying don't save anybody. No. You can pray till you die and go to hell. Yes, Praying won't save anybody. No. Praying might be the atmosphere in which you kind of bring yourself before God, but praying don't save you. Faith saves you. Faith saves you. It's reaching out and taking a hold of the hand of God and believing what He said. Are you listening to me tonight? Faith saves you. You go into a store and you say, I want to, you say somebody, you say, now, I, I hate stores. I don't mean particularly here. I hate stores. I can't stand to go shopping. I'd rather take a beating than go shopping. I hate it. I walk into a store, whatever I need. I find me somebody and I say, I'm here to get so-and-so. She said, it's over yonder. I said, don't tell me where it's at. Show me. I ain't got time to hunt it. But you go into a store and you say, I need a gallon of milk. She says, it's over yonder on the other side of the aisle, on the back side and the, coo- the coolers. I go down the aisle and I say to the next fellow, I say, I need a gallon of milk. She said, it's over yonder on the back side of the room and, and go get it over there. Yes. And then I go over this way and I say, that guy said, I need a gallon of milk. He said, it's over yonder on the back side of the wall. Go over there and get it. Amen. Amen. After a while, I got to quit asking for it and I got to go over there where it's at and reach my hand in the cooler and take hold of it. Reason some of you ain't getting saved, you won't go over and take hold of it. You got to take hold of it. You got to tell the devil he's a liar and get off your back and take hold of it. Get over there and get it. Say, Lord, I want you to be my Savior and take him by the hand. Take him by the hand. Go get it. John 6, 37, all that the Father giveth to me shall come to me and him that cometh to me I'll no wise cast out. If you don't come to him and reach out to him, he won't turn you away. He'll take you in just like you are and save your soul. Praise God. Amen. It deals with the Savior. Revelation 22, 17, the Spirit and the bride say come. Let him that heareth say come. Amen. And let him that is a thirst do what? Come. If you thirst, he said just come. Whosoever will, thank God, let him take of the water of life, F-R-E-E-L-Y. Won't cost you a dime. It's all been bought. It's all been paid for. It's all free. Thank God at Calvary. God paid the entire the merit of a sinner with his own precious blood and will save you freely. It was lied, some of you. Seeking God won't save you. Praying won't save you. Living right won't save you. Coming to this church won't save you. Singing the songs of Zion won't save you. Reading the Bible won't save you. There's only one Savior and it's a person. It's not a plan. It's not a program. It's not a picture. It's one person. Amen. It ain't a principle. It's a person. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ the Lord. Salvation deals with sin. Salvation deals with the Savior. Salvation deals with getting saved. Amen. I know these verses of Scripture have been taken out of the context, but they are still in the Bible. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, 
Lord Jesus, shall believe in thine heart that God's raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness, the mouth confession is made unto salvation. There is no difference in the Jew and the Greek. The same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him, whose is called upon the name of the Lord. Thank God shall be saved. If you'll come and call and confess, he'll save you. It ain't nothing else. It's that simple. I told you some are making it too simple. Some are making it too hard. But there is a medium ground of a truth that Christ died for your sins and wants to be your Lord. Amen. And you repent of your sin and turn to Him in an humble heart and a broken spirit and a contrite spirit. God will save you. Amen. 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 You say, hey, you know, happened to me. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was in a meeting in South Carolina two weeks ago. A bunch of dope addicts got saved. I mean, I'm talking about dope addicts. I'm telling you, God birthed them old dope addicts into the family of God. Last two weeks at that church on Sunday, they've been bringing their sisters and brothers and family, and they've been getting saved. Amen. I'm glad, thank God, it ain't too hard for nobody. It ain't too high for nobody. It's for a simple people like me and you that have, thank God, recognized the Savior as the Lord of life and turned from his sin and turned to the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm having a good time telling that old story. Save you. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes. He wants to save you. Go ahead. Yes, he does. If you can believe that. The reason you ain't getting saved, some maybe don't believe he wants to save you. That's right. Now I want you to listen to that in a minute. He don't want to save all of you, he wants to save you. Amen. He don't he don't save groups. He saved people, Amen. individuals, Amen. one by one. Yes, sir. He said, it's too late. Wasn't too late for that thief on the cross. No. 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 Wasn't too late for that good air in the morning. Looked like his hopeless case. No. 3,000 devils in him. Yes, sir. Wasn't too late for that Samaritan woman. No. She had been married five times. Wasn't too late for the Apostle Paul. Very religious man, but it wasn't too late. Thank God it's never too late. Amen. Isaiah 45, 22. Look unto me and be ye saved. All ye ends of the earth. I'm God beside me. There is none other. Thank God it ain't too late. You say, well, I'm going to do it with religion. Junk it. God hates it anyhow. God don't want religion. He's seen all that he can take. He wants you. He wants your heart. He wants your soul. He wants your mind. He wants your spirit. He wants you. He wants you. You say, well, I don't know. It ain't nothing in you. It ain't nothing in me. I've been meditating on this thing for 40 years now. I tell you what I've come down to, son. There ain't but one reason that God wanted any of us. That's because of what's in him. It was what's in him alone. It's a love that's in him. I've been asking myself the question, why in the world did Adam, knowing better, seeing, Eve was deceived. She didn't know no better. What the Bible said. But Adam willfully, knowingly, deliberately sinned and died. Amen. Ask myself the question, why would he deliberately, knowingly sin, presumptuously sin, and knowing he's going to die, why would he do that? Mm-hmm. Same reason Christ willfully, knowingly, deliberately, presumptuously entered into sin for me and you and died for us. Yeah. You know why he wanted, you know why Adam wanted to die? Uh-huh. You know why Adam wanted to die? One reason only. He loved that woman. Uh-huh. He said, I'd rather die than live without my bride. Uh-huh. Y'all getting off quiet right there. I'd rather die than live without her, so I'll just sin and die with her. Uh-huh. I'm the bride of Christ tonight. Uh-huh. Church is the bride of Christ. Yes. You know the reason he died? Because yes. he said, I'd rather die than live without her. Yes. 
I love her so much I'd rather die than live without her. And Christ loved the church so much that he'd rather die. Ephesians 5, 25. Husbands, love your wife even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. He loved us enough to die for us. Thank God he loved us enough to die for us. That's the reason he did it, because he loved us. He didn't see something good in you and me. He just loved us because who he was. It's his character, his attribute that caused him to save us. Amen. I don't know why God saved me. I don't know why God saved any of us. Don't ask me, I just know this. Somehow, unbeknownst, bigger than you and I can ever figure out, he loves us. Not with a temporary love, but with an everlasting love, with an eternal love, with an enduring love, with a love, thank God, who shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, tribulation, persecution, famine, sword, and nakedness. They ain't nothing. Nobody will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. He'll love us when the stars fall from the sockets. He'll love us whenever sinners burn in hell. He'll still be loving his church and his people. And he wants you to be one of them. You're right. You're right. Yes, I don't know if my Lord quit right there. Pick back up on what I really want to say tomorrow night. I'm trying to tell you tonight if you're lost. Don't wait on daddy. Don't wait on mama. Don't wait on nobody else. Lord wants you to be saved. Amen. That's right. On the authority of that book, if you'll cry out to God and repent of your sins yes. and tell God, Lord, I'm sorry I'm a sinner. Uh-huh. I'm sorry that I'm living the way I am. I'm yes. sorry that I've run my life. Yes. I'm sorry that I'm wicked. I'm yes. sorry that I've got the heart that yes. I've got. Yes. I'm sorry that I'm a sinner. Yes. Right. Yes. And Lord, I want to be saved. Yes. Right. And you'll say, Lord, I'm reaching to you. You know what he'll do to you? you listen, you say, well, hey, he, will he reach or not? You let, let me tell you something. Look at me a minute. Let me tell you something. That's exactly what he's doing right now. Uh-huh. What do you think you're doing in this church? Exactly That's right. right. He's the one who reached out and pulled you in here to start with. The very fact you're here knows let me know you're reaching. He's reaching to you. That's right, brother. Go ahead. The very fact that you've even got a hunger for God lets me know he's dealing with you. You wouldn't have no hunger for God if it wasn't for God himself. You'd still be out trying to pour liquor in a glass, breaking vodka out of a bottle, living in sin, popping pills and shooting dope. Amen. If it wasn't for God that pulled you out of that mess to start with, you'd still be sitting out trying to own a church bench, some word religion, going to hell, but God pulled you in out of that. That's very fact shows he's the one that pulled you in. No man shall come to me except my Father which sent me draw him. John 6, 44. The very fact you're here proves he's drawing you. Don't sit on a church bench till you fit in. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Die lost. Yeah, you're right. He'll save you tonight. Listen to me. Listen to me. He'll save you tonight. Yes. You'll just trust him. Amen. Believe what he said. Yes. You see, listen to me. You're making a liar of what God said. You're right. Believe what God said. That's right. Amen. Hebrews 6 said about two immutable things in which it's impossible for God to lie. Amen. Titus 1, 2, I think it is, said in hopes of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. God cannot lie. Amen. God cannot Amen. lie. Amen. God cannot Amen. lie. Amen. He said, if you'll come to me, call on me and confess me with your mouth and believe yeah. in your heart that I died for you and rose again. Yeah. He yeah. said, I promise you on the authority of my name, my word. Psalm 138, verse number two. Yeah. Thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Yeah. Amen. Hey, God tonight, God cannot lie. Amen. He'll do just what he said he oh, would do. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, he, well, yes, he did. He can't lie. I didn't say he won't lie. Yeah. Right. He, right. Amen, he cannot. He cannot. Do you reckon you can put an ad under this building that can fly away with it? You say, can't happen. God can't lie neither. Right. It'd be easier to put this building on the back of the mat and let it fly away with it. It would be for God to lie. Right. Right. It can't happen. Right. It, can't ha- it ain't in his nature. Right. It ain't in his character. Right. It can't happen. The first attribute of God's a holy God. Yeah. Before his love is his holiness. Yeah. And he can't lie to you. Yeah. 
believe what he said. After you heard the word of truth, gospel of your salvation, in whom you believed, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. After you believed, you were sealed. For that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the inheritance of the, the redemption, uh, the, uh, the uh, well, I forgot it's what it says there, the earnest of your inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession. That's what it says. Amen. He sealed you and saved you and sealed you in the Holy Ghost, and you'll be God for the rest of your life. Let me stop just a minute. You say, well, what if I can't live it? You can't. Let me tell you that right now. It ain't God do with you living it. It's God do with him being your father and you being his son. He'll make a son out of you. It ain't got to do with what you do. It's your boy, is it? That's your flesh and blood boy. Yes, sir. All right. Let me ask you something. Have y'all ever been out of fellowship? A little bit of something other, a little miffed at each other maybe? Maybe you had to get on him a little bit and maybe he went to the room and pouted a little bit and he didn't like it real good. No, no boy likes daddy getting on him. Maybe. <laughs> well, don't look at me like that. I killed it right there. <laughs> but is there anything ever, anything, that can ever stop that boy from being your son. No, sir. Mm -hmm. That's good, preacher. Same way with God. He can walk away and never walk back in your house mad at you, uh -huh. but you're still his son. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank God one day I'll become a son of God. Yes. Got birth in the family and become a son of God. Yes. From that day forward, I'm the son of God. Yes. I'll live the Son of God. I'll die the Son of God. I'll live in heaven forever the Son of God. There ain't nothing to nobody. There ain't enough devils in hell to change that. There ain't enough men on this earth. I'm in the hand of the Father. God put me in the hand of the Father. And no man going to put me out. I belong to God. I'm saved and saved eternally. I belong to the Lord. I'm a sheep of his pastor. I'm one of the people of his hand. I'm safe and secure in the hand of God. He wants to save you. Quit praying and start believing. Amen. Tell him, say, God, I'm going to believe you tonight. Yes, sir. I'm going to trust you. Yes, sir. I'm going to depend on you. Amen. I'm going to put myself in your hands. I'm going to depend on you. Amen. That's right. Me and my wife started courting. We'll be married 39 years this fall. I'm trying to hush. I'm going to shut up. We first started courting. When I first got saved, when we first started courting, I was preaching when we started courting. I was pastoring church when I met her. I was pastoring church before I got married. And uh, she'd get in the car, and I was a little wild back then. I mean, I'd lay down, buddy. I'd pull out. You don't pull out slow. You'd pull out. You know, you pulled out, buddy. Amen. And she got a little bit nervous about the way I drive, and I'd seen her all this shit, hold on, you know, to this and hold on to that. And she hadn't, never, she hadn't committed herself to me yet. She hadn't entrusted herself in my driving yet. But now then I go flying down the road and she sits snoring. You know why? She's learned to trust me. Yes. Right. She committed herself to me yes. and she entrusted herself to my driving. Yes. Amen. You know what you do when you get saved? You quit trusting in yourself and you just lay back, bless God, and shout and cry and creep, hoot and holler and enjoy the Lord and, and bless God and, and entrust yourself to Him. Yes. Let Him take you where you're going. Yes. Entrust yourself to Him. Yes. Give yourself to Him. Yes. One day, thank God, we stood at an altar 39 years ago. And I said, uh, I said uh, 38 years ago, I guess it is. And the preacher said, do you? And I said, I do. No. Will you? And I said, I will. Yes, and then he looked at her and said, do you? And she said, I do. No. And he said, will you? And he said, I will. Yes. And we did, and we've been doing it ever since. Amen. 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 And thank God, I entrusted myself to her. Yes. I gave myself to her. Yes. I committed myself to her. Yes. That's what God said for you to do to him tonight. Give yes. yourself to him. Yes. You say, well, I can't see him. Nobody else can either. Amen. No man's seen God at any time. No. You'll never see God. No. You've got to trust him by faith. Amen. I ain't never seen him, never will, till I get out of this life. Amen. But you'll never convince me he ain't real. Amen. What are you going to do with Christ? What are you going to do with Christ? Greatest question probably in the whole Bible. What shall I then do with Jesus? He's called Christ. What am I going to do with him? You going to trust him? I'm going to tell you something, I'm done. I was raised in a drunkard's home. I didn't know nothing about God. I absolutely didn't know nothing about God. I didn't know nothing about God. I'm trying to hush. 
You know, think about God. I didn't know how to get saved, but I wanted to get saved. I remember as a little boy, and y'all laugh at this, but I didn't know no better. I remember as a little boy, I'd go out on the side of a hill. You know how the sky red in the evening, about June, about, about, it gets real red one spot, and then it's blue over here, and it's real red over there. I remember laying on my back looking up at the sky, and I'd say, God, if that red part's hell, I don't want to go there. And God, if that blue part's heaven, that's where I want to go. You say, that's crazy. Well, I didn't know no better. But God knew. Amen. God knew my heart. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I got up and made a mess of my life about 16 to 19. I'm telling you, I got so deep in sin. I wanted to die. I there's times in my life, if I could have turned the button and turned life off, I'd have turned that button and turned life off. I didn't want to live. Yeah. But one night I heard the gospel. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I don't know how to be saved, but I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how I got saved. Let me tell you how I got saved. It's what I've done. It's what I've done, Brother Francis. It's what I've done. I got on my face. And I said, God, I don't know how to be saved. I don't know if anybody ever told me at that point, really. I'd heard the gospel of that one preacher. That's, that's the only gospel I'd ever heard. I'm talking about the gospel. I'd heard preaching. Sure. There's a difference between preaching and hearing the gospel. Amen. Yep. I'd never heard it before. Except that one time. And he had said this statement. He said, plead the blood. Plead the blood. And this is what I said to the Lord. I got on my face that night and I said, Lord, I don't know how to be saved. But I said, Lord, I plead the blood. I said, that preacher said, plead the blood. I said, Lord, I don't even know what all that means. I said, but Lord, I plead the blood. I plead the blood. And I'm not making this up, Brother Jesse. I'm not making this up. And for about 20 minutes, all I said, I was laying on my face crying. And all I said for about 20 minutes was, Lord, I plead the blood. 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 Lord, I don't know what all that means, but Lord, I plead the blood. Lord, I plead the blood. Lord, I plead the blood. My heart was harder. My heart was, my heart was harder than 20 feet of concrete at that time. I'd lived in sin, and my heart was hard as it could be. I didn't love nobody. I hated the world around me. After about 15 minutes of that, something went to breaking on the inside. I could feel something breaking on the end. It's like a dam cracking on the inside of my soul. I kept saying, I plead the blood. And I'm not talking about a vision or an audible voice. But I'm talking about in my mind. I've, God helped me to realize that Christ Jesus the Lord had died for me. And I reached out and said, Lord, I take him. I receive him tonight. John 1 10, he came into his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him to them, he gave him power to become the sons of God, mm. even to them yes. that believe on his name. Yes. Yes, sir. That night I believed on him. Yes, sir. Amen. I didn't even have a Bible. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have found a verse in it if I'd have been told to. But I'll tell you what he did that night. He saw a lost drunkard's boy yes. that was headed to hell and had yep. no hope. Yep. And he saw my heart. Yes, sir. And he heard my cry. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes, sir. And that's about all it took. Oh, yeah. And he done the rest of it. Amen. <laughs> that's all you need to do Amen. tonight. Right. Is come before him honestly with an open, honest heart yeah. and an humble heart and tell him just what you are and tell him just what you want. Exactly and right. believe that he said, Whosoever call on me, yes, I'll be saved. Yes. That's you. Amen. That's me. It's everybody. It's everybody. Now listen to me. Don't you let nobody make it too hard. Right. I know we're going to the house here in a minute. Some of you done lost on me. You've done dried up on me. Don't make it too hard. Calvinist people make it too hard. Right. Soul winners make it too easy. Amen. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, there's a true medium. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What you need to do tonight is by faith, get up. Let me tell you what I do sometimes, church. I'm trying to shut up. I'm not preaching hard right now. Try to shut up. I preach 300 times a year. I never get to be in what we call an invitation or an altar call. Every once in a while when I'm at home, <coughs> I'll go to church. And I just live oh, just 800 yards from church right around the curve. I'll go out to church. And I'll go to the back of the building. And I'll say, Lord, this is me. This is my response to you today. I'm coming to you. And in faith, I can't see him. But my faith is saying, I am going to God. Right. When you come to this altar, God ain't on the altar. God ain't in the building. God ain't in the mountains. God's everywhere. Yeah. Anywhere he sees your heart. You say, where'd you get saved? Floorboard of a 1979 Subaru. 
You say, God won't save you in a Subaru. God will save you in a Ford. <laughs> he better. It ain't where you're at. It's the heart and frame of your mind that you're in. It's what I told the Lord and I finally got saved. Just before I got saved, that's what I said to the Lord. I'm done, I promise you. I said, Lord, if you'll just save me and get me out of my sin and give me something worth living for and come into my life and change my life, I said, Lord, the minute you save me, you can kill me the next second if you want to. I was willing to die to live. I come willing to die to get to live. He did. He saved me. And I'm not kidding you. I expected, I expected the next few minutes that God would kill me. But he had a better plan. Amen. He wanted to let me live. That's right. Then I could tell the old story <laughs> of what he can do for others. That's exactly right. You need to get up tonight. You yes. need to get up tonight. And you need to come to the Lord tonight yes. and tell the devil he's a liar. Right. And tell your flesh it's a liar. Yeah, right. And tell all those people that lied to you all your life for right. some old dead doctrine. Yeah. And come to yes, Jesus right. tonight and ask Jesus Christ to save you. Yes. Let's right. all stand. Let's all stand. Bow to pray. Come do what you need to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. What are you going to do tonight with Christ? What are you going to do with Christ? Come on, right now. Come right now. Get up. Come to Jesus now. Get up and come to Jesus. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on, ma'am. Come on. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus right now. Listen, the Lord will save you. You got to tell him what you want, and you got to quit getting up and going back to your seat, saying, "Lord, if I'm lost, God, I need to be." He'll save you tonight. He wants to save you tonight. Right. He wants to save you tonight. Take him at his word. Simply take him at his word. Take him at his word tonight. If you'll come to me, I'll in no wise cast you out. That's His promise. That's the promise of His Word. If you're in the seat and you're saved, pray. Beg God for these folk that need the Lord tonight. Beg God to shine light in them. Beg God to break that doctrine of whatever's in their mind. Beg God to break that mental thought or that mental impression and to just see Christ as the Savior wanting to save sinners from their sin. Anybody else need to come? Whatever you'll need, I don't know. Will you come? Salvation deals with sin. Salvation deals with a Savior. Salvation deals with salvation. Second Timothy 1 9 said, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling? Not according to our works, but according to His mercy, which has promised us in Christ Jesus before the world began who hath abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The gospel is the light of God. If our gospel be hid, hid them that's lost, whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them, lest they should believe the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Will you take Christ tonight? I, I don't know what your preacher thinks about this. At this very second, I don't much care. If you need help around the altar and I can talk to you, let me just raise your hand. I'll talk to you a little bit. I'll help you any way I can. All you've got to do, I know that I, blow, I, know I ain't a Savior. I can't save you. I can't even make you want to be saved. But if you've got some question, something I can help you, I'll be glad to help you. But you've got to talk to the Lord. He's the Savior. He's the one that saves. Take Him tonight. Take Him tonight. I perceive some of you folk here on the altar may be lost. Take Him tonight. Take Jesus. Say, Lord, I'm taking you. I, I'm receiving you tonight. I'm taking you by faith to be the Lord of my life. I'm committing my life to you, and I'm taking you to be the Lord of my life tonight. Oh, what a happy time it would be for you to just get up your stay at where you're at tonight and say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm going to commit myself, and I'm going to profess that I'm saved by the grace of God. Can you do that? Can you do that tonight? You do that. Sister, won't you come play something softly on the piano over here? Just softly. Can you take him tonight? That's all you got to do. I'm not lied to you. I've told you the truth of the gospel tonight. I've probably quoted you 65, 70 verses of scripture tonight. 
Take him. Take him. Take him. Take him. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Take him. Receive him. John 1.10 is in the world. The world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came unto his own. His own received him not. But it's a many has received him. To them gave you power to become the sons of God, even them believe on his name. Search the scriptures from them. You think you have eternal life, and there they which turn me, they testify me, will not come to me. Come to him. I believe that's what you're doing. I believe that's what you folk on this altar are doing. I believe you're coming to him. I believe that's the desire of your heart. But you need to go a step further and believe that he's a truthful God, an honest God, a holy God, that he'll do what he said he would do. Can you take him by faith? I'll tell you how you black a devil's eye. You get up by faith. You say, Lord, I'm from this day to the rest of my life. I've committed my soul into your safe care. And I'm going to trust you with my soul. You can trust him tonight. Who in the world can you trust better than the God of heaven? Oh, God. Oh, God. You praying? Are you praying, church? Are you praying? I know some make it simple, some make it hard, but God's trying to make it truthful to you tonight. He's trying to make it real to you. We come to Jesus. Let me say it again. The very reason you're here is that He's drawn you here. He's the ones brought you here. He's the very ones brought you here. He's the very reason you're here tonight. It's His work. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. Francis, trust Him. Take Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. Trust Him. Believe Him. Believe on Him. Believe on Him. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. He that believeth on me shall never thirst. Whosoever cometh to me, I'll in no wise cast him out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the good Lord. Bless the good Lord of heaven. Trust Him tonight. Trust Him. Take Him. I'm trying my best to keep on. Trust Him. The devil will try to beat you again tonight. Trust Him tonight. Raise up in faith and take Him at His word and say, Lord, I'm taking you tonight and I'm going to believe you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Dear Lord Jesus, oh God in heaven, oh holy God in heaven, great eternal God tonight, please give these folks liberty, God, to believe on you. Lord, birth them in your family, I pray. Give them faith, God. Without faith, it's impossible to please you. Oh God, give them faith tonight to believe. Grant them the gift of faith. Grant them faith, God, to look away from their self and to look unto God who is the Savior. Give them faith, God, we pray tonight. Oh, God, give them faith, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Listen, friends, salvation's got to do with the Word of God. You can't get saved if you believe what God says. Salvation's believing what the Lord said, taking Christ at His Word. Coming to the Lord Jesus and believing what He said. You got to take Him at His word.
Can you trust Him tonight? Will you? He said, Preacher, I want to. I just don't know how. I've been there. Tell Him that. Say, Lord, I, I really don't know. Lord, help me to understand. Lord, help me to understand. Oh, God. I believe somebody not take him at his word. I do. I believe somebody not can raise in faith. Say, Lord, I'm believing you. It ain't what you feel. You ain't going to feel nothing. You ain't, if you're waiting for some kind of big feeling or some blinding light, you're going to be late until you die. It ain't going to come. It's faith. It's faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Romans 5, 1, therefore been justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's by faith. Abraham was justified by faith. Romans 4. Paul said that I might be found in him, not having my own righteousness, but the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ. Philippians 3. Take him. I'm telling you not. Take him. Take him. Take him at his word. Take him at his word. Tell the devil he's a liar. You've been going around this mountain so long, it's got all muddled. You wait in that water so long, you got it muddy and you can't see in it no more. Take him at his word.